Hey there, West Michigan. Thanks for watching 13 Weather Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barons. We are looking at a quiet start to the work week, but things will quickly escalate from there as a very high impact winter storm could be on the way for Wednesday and into Thursday. We're going to be breaking down the impacts on that coming up in just a little bit. But before we get there, let's start with your weather that was around on Sunday, and it was very nice out there. Temperatures made their way up into the upper 40s and even 50s. 47 Grand Rapids, 54 Kalamazoo. 47 in Muskegon. Those temperatures well above the average of 35. Inside our forecast, though, told you 46 hit 47, brings the accuracy streak to four days in a row with just three misses in the last month of forecasting. When it comes to tomorrow, cooler temperatures are in view, not by a lot, but enough to turn the weather ball blue. 13 weather ball lit up in blue, of course, does mean those cooler temperatures are in view. And the view of the 13 weather ball is sponsored by Countryside Greenhouse of Allendale. Temperatures as of about 730 were still very mild, hanging on to the 40s in most of West Michigan, even close to the 50s down in Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. Those temperatures will fall some tonight, but with clouds increasing and winds remaining from the west to southwest, it will keep temperatures a bit on the mild side. Winds around 5 to 15 at this hour across West Michigan. The temperatures through tonight with the cloud cover again only going to fall to around 30, but as we see the sun poke back out tomorrow and winds continue to uh, be mostly from the south, temperatures will be back in to the low 40s by your Monday afternoon. The day planner forecast again down to 30 for tonight. We'll see temperatures up to a high of 42 for tomorrow. While we're dry during the day Monday, our first taste of wintry weather comes Monday night and into early Tuesday when some scattered rain and snow pushes through. Impacts from this first round will be relatively minor. And then our next round comes Tuesday night. Tuesday itself mostly cloudy during the day, but then that snow comes overnight Tuesday into Wednesday, dropping a couple inches inches across the region. Temperature up to 33 Tuesday afternoon, but that won't be the biggest impact that will again come on Wednesday. The radar out there for this evening is very quiet here in West Michigan. It should stay so through the overnight hours. Our first system, the one that comes in on Monday night, is out in the Dakotas at this time and that will push our way over the next 24 hours. We'll track it here at the hour by hour forecast. You can see the cloud cover around this evening breaking some as we head toward Monday morning, partly cloudy skies throughout a good chunk of the day on Monday, but as we head toward Monday night, cloud cover will start to increase. We'll eventually go back to mostly cloudy skies, and then we'll track that round of rain and snow mix come through as we head toward 9, 10 o'clock Monday evening and into the overnight hours when it eventually shifts over to all light snow. This is very light stuff, maybe a little dusting, a slick spot on a bridge or an overpass, but nothing major from this first round of wintry weather as it pushes through, and in fact, we're back to some peaks of sunshine by Tuesday afternoon. As clouds build Build again heading into Tuesday night. This is the first round of uh, more impactful winter weather heading our way. Cloud cover takes over by nine o'clock and then we see snow push in as we head past midnight. A pretty good swath of uh, decent snowfall from about uh, 96 to the north. It kind of tapers off pretty quickly as you get down to Allegan and Berry counties. Uh, this will produce some accumulation, especially the further north that you go. But again, that's not what we're concerned about. You can see the area of concern start to make its way into the picture as we head toward noon Wednesday. That's going to be a widespread and prolonged area of freezing rain and sleet that will come into West Michigan. This will be combined with winds of 20 to 30 plus miles per hour, which could potentially lead to some very dangerous icing conditions and power outages as we head into the day on Wednesday. We'll talk more on that in a second. First, that snowfall again that comes in Tuesday night into early Wednesday drops about one to two inches across the region. This will be able to be dealt with on Wednesday morning. So don't expect too many impacts before noon. But again, that freezing rain is what we're really concerned about as we head into Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, Wednesday night and early Thursday. Again, we're looking at several hours here of sleet and freezing rain that are expected across West Michigan. You can see that really taking hold here as we head toward the evening rush on Wednesday. If you uh, stick around too late at work and you're heading out uh, more towards seven, eight o'clock, things are going to get very messy very quickly across the region. That rain and freezing um, freezing rain will be mostly from 96 down to the Indiana border. Once you get north of 96, you get a really heavy band of snow. This continues from uh, the sunset hours on Wednesday past midnight on Thursday and into the early AM hours and even morning commute hours of Thursday morning. This is still ongoing across the region, so it's going to be a prolonged period and a messy period of wintry weather here across West Michigan. What we're looking at in terms of impacts from this system 
system is mostly snow. Once you get again north of 96, this is where the heavier snow is going to fall. Once you get south of there, this is going to be our mixing zone. This is where we could get several inches of sleet and freezing rain and some snow in this area here. Now, a lot of times these systems, um, the models don't pull the warm air as far north as they may actually occur. So this is an area where we could see a lot of flux where we're thinking we're going to have a pretty set pattern is this area down here, Allegan Berry County down to the 94 quarter. Models have been consistent for several days now and pinning this area as the highest area for freezing rain and sleet, possibly even some rain, but it's mostly been freezing rain and sleet uh, pretty consistently here in the models over the last several days. So if we're going to see the heaviest icing potential, it's going to be along this 94 corridor. It gets a little less the further north that you go. But again, if we move that warm air a little bit further north, then that heavy ice potential could come up into Kent County. And that's what we're going to have to watch very carefully as we head through the next several days. When it comes to snow impacts across northern portions of Michigan, this is going to be a very heavy, very impactful snowfall. We're talking upwards of a foot of snow that could easily fall across portions of the lower peninsula and up into the UP, where we could see again just really heavy snow combined with wind, drifting, low visibility, just not good travel conditions across the northern portions of the state, and that will drop down into our northern counties as well. Oceana, Nuevo, Macosta, Montcalm could see some pretty heavy snowfall by the time the system's all said and done. But of course, snow is one thing, ice is another. Here's a look at what we're thinking for ice impacts across the region. Once you get north of 96, you're pretty much in the clear when it comes to ice potential. You guys are going to be dealing mostly with the snow. Ice impacts start to ramp up as you travel south through Kent County with heaviest ice impacts expected across the southern counties where we could see some major to extreme ice impacts according to what we've seen in the models here for the past several days. That is repeated in the European model where again the heaviest impacts are expected across that 94 corridor. We're not going to put numbers on this just yet because it's really hard to pin down the exact totals when it comes to ice like this. It can vary a lot. A lot of factors are at play here. Surface temperatures, wind, precipitation rate. This is going to be a really heavy precipitation event regardless of uh, whether it comes down to snow, rain or freezing rain and heavy precipitation rates can actually um, hinder, uh, prevent ice from accumulating on surfaces out there. But even if we don't get the highest amount of ice, we get any icing out there of 20 to 30 plus mile per hour winds. And it's going to be a thing where we're going to have to watch for power outages that could potentially be pretty problematic Wednesday night and into the day on Thursday. Let's break down those ice impacts for you. If you get about a tenth of an inch, you're going to start to see some tree and power line issues out there, certainly sidewalks and roads. If you get up into the quarter inch of ice, this is when power outages start to become more common. Roads certainly going to be hard to navigate and we get a half inch or more. This is widespread power outages, very dangerous travel. You're really just not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter if you have four wheel drive or not. Uh, there's just no traction when it comes to that type of icing, and that's certainly something we're watching as a possibility uh, for this kind of icing. As we head into this week, uh, this would be ice storm type weather that is possibly on the way as we head toward Wednesday, again, Wednesday evening into Thursday. So these are what we're going to be watching as we head throughout the next several days. Samantha Jacks, uh, Blake Hansen, Chief Meteorologist George Lessons, we're all going to be here tracking this very carefully. So make sure you're tuning in for future updates as we really iron these details out in the days ahead, but now is the time to make sure that you're already starting to keep a close eye on the forecast because this is going to be a disruptive storm when it comes through later this week. Before we get there, though, nice weather on Monday. Temperatures hanging around in the 40s on the lakeshore, partly cloudy during the day, 30s and 40s for our northern zones. We'll see those temperatures hanging around 42 Grand Rapids, 44 in Kalamazoo. 13 on your side, 10 day outlook. Temperatures falling after we get past President's Day on Monday with that first round of snow and rain coming through Monday night. Very little impact with that. A more impactful snow Tuesday night, but still manageable. It's that wintry mix, freezing rain, winter slash ice storm that comes in Wednesday and Thursday that has all of our attention and where you need to be most focusing on the forecast. If we do get uh, the right pattern in, we can warm temperatures up above freezing on Thursday. We can hopefully melt some of this off before Friday when temperatures crash down into the 20s and everything that's left is going to freeze. Uh, the concern with sleet being it's heavy, it's hard to shovel, and if we get several inches of sleet, whatever we don't get off the surfaces on Thursday will freeze into a slab of ice on Friday. Temperatures, though, will warm back up. 
through the 30s and into the 40s as we head toward the end of the forecast. Now remember, you can also keep up to date on the changing weather conditions here in West Michigan by downloading the 13 on your side weather app. You'll be able to see current conditions and the upcoming forecast and radar. It's free to download in the App Store and Google Play. You can also text the word weather to 616-559-1310 to get a link to the latest forecast. For now, thanks for watching 13 plus. Make sure you're staying weather aware as you head throughout this week. I'm meteorologist Michael Behrens. Hope you have a great week ahead.